This game is too hot to handle. It's called Hotbox. In this small-sided game, we're helping players learn to switch the point of attack by putting a big ol' obstacle in their way. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Then use four more cones to create a square in the center of your grid, also known as the hotbox. Divide players into teams of three, four, or more. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones below knee height. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. There's just one hitch. Players can't enter the hot box. Only balls can pass through. What does this mean? Attackers with the ball may find their path blocked by defenders with a touchline on one side and the hot box on the other, giving them less room to maneuver. The solution? Switch the point of attack by sending the ball to a teammate. Play five-minute rounds. The team with the most goals wins the round. Coaches, this is a great time to reinforce techniques you've introduced during practice, like small group attacking. But don't overcoach. The rules of the scrimmage naturally push players to solve problems on their own in a fun way. Remember, heads up, find a teammate, keep out of the hot box. Seriously, is it getting hot in here? Break out the board shorts and sunblock. We're playing Hawaii. Yes, here we go. A small-sided game is a scrimmage with a twist. In this one, we're helping players work on shooting from a distance and transitioning between attacking and defending. Use cones to create a square space, then place goals or pairs of cones about five yards back from your grid, two goals on each end. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or 5v5. Here, we're playing 3v3. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players can score on either goal on their end line, but they have to shoot from inside the grid. The idea is for players to hone their shooting accuracy in the midst of a chaotic, fast-moving game. Don't worry about throw-ins or kick-ins. Just keep a bunch of balls next to you, coach, and keep feeding them in. We want players looking up to find the nearest goal as soon as they receive the ball, then seeing if they can take a shot right away. But they'd better move fast because a smaller space makes the defender's job a lot easier. Expect plenty of turnovers, with players transitioning frequently between attacking and defending. Just to add that to the why this game is great pile. Coaches, embrace the chaos and fun in this game and consider resisting the urge to correct your players or give immediate feedback. Sometimes the best coaching is observing. Remember, look for the goal, win the ball, take the shot. If you close your eyes, you can almost smell the ocean breeze. Ball, check. Cones, check. Abacus, check. This is flying numbers. Here, players practice attacking and defending with different levels of support. Use four cones to mark your space with goals on both sides. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies who stand to either side of you along the touchline. Ready? 1v1! Here's how it looks. You call out a number combo like 1v1 or 2v2, and each side sends in that number of players to scrimmage. Ready? 2v2! Play! Here, mine, I'm behind, I'm behind. Each time a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. You can mix it up by calling a different number from each side. Ready, 2v1. Which helps players learn to take advantage of an extra attacker. It's a little like five games in one. You've got scrimmaging, small-sided attacking and defending, even one-on-one -on -one play. Players love it because they get so many touches on the ball. And you'll love it because you can manipulate the game so every player is challenged according to their ability. If you have a strong attacker on one side, try playing them 1v2. If one player is getting fewer touches on the ball, play the ball directly to them. Coaches, because this game is so fast-paced, players may try to shoot immediately. Just encourage them to be patient and work with their teammate to get into a better position to score. Remember, attack as a team, look for the goal, and find a good position to score. There is strength in numbers. They say, leave no man or woman behind. But in this game, you actually have to. We're playing half and half. 
Like other small-sided games, this one looks like a scrimmage, but it has a twist. Here, we're helping players learn to spread out when attacking. Those who do will be richly rewarded. Use cones to set up a rectangular grid and place a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Place more cones down the center of your grid, right across the midpoint of the field. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones below knee height. There's just one catch. The goal only counts if the attacking team has at least one player in both their attacking and defending halves. What does this mean? It means that when players cross the midpoint of the field with the ball, moving into their attacking half towards the goal they're trying to score on, at least one teammate must stay behind on the other side of the midpoint. That's their defending half. This forces attackers to spread out, not just across the width of the field, but across the length as well. While the player who hangs back might miss out on some of the action, they're priceless if their team loses possession. Coaches, like any muscle, this instinct takes time to develop too. Remind players to look for the best position to support their teammates at any given time. Remember, win the ball, spread out, take the shot. A little balance in both halves goes a long way. In this one, we're taking a little inspiration from basketball to help your soccer. This is Half Court Soccer. A small-sided game is like a scrimmage with a twist. In this one, we're working on team attacking and defending skills while squeezing the game into half the space. Use cones to create a rectangular grid that's wider than it is long. On one end, add more cones to form a line. This will be your check line. Place your goal on the other end. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more, plus an optional additional player as goalie who rotates. Here, we're playing 3v3 plus a goalie. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage, but both teams are trying to score on the same goal, just like in half-court basketball. The other rule we're stealing from hoops? If a team steals the ball, they need to clear it by dribbling it across the check line, like that, before they attempt to score. In other words, no quick steals and shots from close range. Other than that rule, we're working on the same skills as in other scrimmages, for attackers to spread out and work as a team to beat defenders and for defenders to make a quick approach to the ball, then to get low and slow as they get close. Coaches expect things to get a little congested since both teams are going for the same goal. Encourage your players to think of the check line as an opportunity to work on their passing skills and to use their shielding skills to maintain possession of the ball, like that, as they clear the ball and make their plan of attack. Remember, check the ball, spread out, take a shot. A little hoops flavor can make your practice even sweeter. We may have gotten our wires a little crossed with this game. It's called crisscross. A small-sided game is like a scrimmage with a twist. In this one, we're helping players remember to look for the goal and attack as a team by changing up their perspective. Use four cones to create a square grid. Then place a goal or pair of cones in the middle of each end line and each touch line. That's right, four goals. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 2v2, 3v3, or more. Here, we're playing 2v2. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. One team can score on either of the touch line goals and the other can score on either of the end line goals. Yep, that's why it's called crisscross. Play a few minutes per round. The team with the most goals wins the round. With two goals per team, players have more options to attack. Not only does this up the ante for defenders, it forces attackers to look for the goal first and to get there quickly whenever they win possession. Yes, it might be disorienting for players, with each side attacking on a different axis. This can lead to some interesting turnovers while really honing your player's instinct to find the goal quickly. Nice. Coaches, this is a good time to reinforce the shooting and passing skills you've worked on in practice and watch your players put them to good use in this game. Also, it never hurts to give them specific encouragement. Instead of just saying, good job, tell them why. 
He pretended he was going to pass to Xavier, but what did he do? He changed direction and he went into the open space, which is exactly what we should be doing. Okay? Good work, AB. Good work, boys. Remember, win the ball, find the goal, take your shot. If it makes you a little dizzy, you're probably doing it right. Hey, has anyone seen the field? It's getting smaller. This is Shrinking Field. Here we're developing team attacking and defending skills with a small-sided game that makes it progressively harder for the attacking team to score. Use four cones to create a grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide players into teams of three, four, or more. You can even play an odd number by giving one side an extra attacker or making one player all-time offense. Here, we're playing 3v3. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage, but without goalies. As in other scrimmages, players score by kicking the ball into an opponent's goal or through the cones below knee height. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. Easy, right? Not so fast. For each minute gone by, we move each touchline in by three steps. This narrower space will force your players to make decisions more quickly and probably a few mistakes along the way. No worries, that's the point. We're mimicking the situation of playing in tighter spaces and under pressure. And with less latitude for attackers, defenders gain an advantage. The team with the most goals after three minutes wins the round. Coaches, emphasize the shielding and passing techniques you've worked on in practice here. As much as possible, we want attackers working together to get past defenders. Encourage defenders to get compact to stop the attack as a team and recover the ball, like that. Remember, shield the ball, pass to a teammate, stop the attack. Say hello to our little field. No player is an island, except in this game, where they kind of are. This is 1v1 to end lines. Here, each player gets lots of touches on the ball, and they're developing their dribbling, attacking, and defending skills. Use four cones to create a small rectangular grid. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies, starting on opposite end lines. Here's how it looks. Here we go, keep that ball under control. Players scrimmage 1v1 and score by dribbling the ball over their opponent's end line within a hula hoop's distance of their body. Well done, Charlie! Each time a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. Well done, Sasha! There's no shooting here. Yes, we know that's the fun part, but this helps players learn to control the ball, and it gives defenders more of a challenge. Go, Sheridan! Don't let her turn! Players love this game because they get so many touches on the ball and even more room to score, and it's fast-paced. So even if you have players waiting, they'll rotate quickly and appreciate the chance to catch their breath. Coaches, if players are unevenly matched, pair them off by ability instead, or play the ball directly to a less skilled player. This way you can challenge each player to the level of their ability. Remember, use your speed, protect the ball, maintain control. Where they're going, you don't need goals. If one goal is never enough, we've got the game for you. This is Five Goal Game. Here we're working on attacking skills and finding a new attacking path when the one you're on gets blocked. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid and use pairs of cones placed arm's length apart to create a goal in each corner, plus a fifth goal in the center. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Each side sends in an equal number of players. You can play 3v3 or 4v4. Here we go. You play in the ball and whoever gets to it first is on the attack. Players try to pass the ball through any goal to a teammate to score. Doesn't matter which direction, as long as it finds a receiver. That goes for the goal in the center too. This makes it extra tricky for the defending team. They have five different goals to protect and the only way to gain possession of the ball is to intercept or steal it. The attackers, meanwhile, have to adapt quickly to pressure by changing the goal they look to attack. If turnovers aren't happening naturally, play short rounds and switch roles to ensure all players get turns attacking and defending. Coaches, teamwork is key here. Remind attackers without the ball to keep moving. We want them finding open space near a goal so their teammate can find them to pass or score. Remember, pass to score, find open space, 
find a new path. Now you know what every goalie's worst nightmare looks like. No, it's not a mistake. Hear us out. This is Team Handball. Yes, we're breaking the cardinal rule of soccer. You can use your hands. This game helps players learn attack positioning and, added bonus, promotes teamwork by requiring an assist to score. You'll need four cones to mark your space with goals or pairs of cones on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. Players use their hands to pass and catch the ball. They can run while holding the ball, but only for three steps. Then it's time to pass. Players score with their feet, but only after a teammate passes the ball. No dropping the ball to yourself. If the ball hits the ground or goes out of bounds, or if a defender intercepts, it's a turnover. Coaches, using their hands makes it easier for players to keep their heads up so they get a better idea of their teammates' positions and how to move to support each other. Encourage players to mix in some long passes to switch the point of attack. Remember, heads up, find a teammate, assists to score. And no penalties for these handballs. <laughs>